happy Monday, September 25, and we are in LaPorte, Indiana, and we are heading to our first pickup for the day. Got an empty trailer attached, and uh, left the yard this morning to head over here, and uh, never been to this place before. Evidently, they make some sort of filters, and uh, gonna get loaded up and run that up to the Eau Claire Distribution Center for Menards and uh, first I got to get loaded up so I should be fairly close a couple miles away but uh, yeah just making our way through small town Indiana here so I will uh, resume once we get to our shipper Street.
well this should be fun. <laughs> I love backing into these old buildings. I know probably make a lot of people cringe, but uh, I like them. I think they're, they're fun. Every time I go into one of these old places, it's like going back in time. Because these buildings were built in, God only knows, 30s, maybe 20s. <laughs> now let's hope that there's nobody on the street. There is that they'll see a truck backing up. Nice and slow. All right. Well, I think by now, if they don't see that trailer coming across the street, I can't help them. Straight back we go. Where we stop, only I know. The hardest thing about going into these buildings is that it's every time you go into them it's always bright out <laughs> it seems like it's always bright sunshine and you're you're entering into darkness so it's really difficult sometimes to see until you're actually inside the building and then it's usually a little too late to maneuver so then you got to pull all the way out again and but I think I got it. We're on dock five, which is to our curb side. At least it's nice they didn't put us on an angled dock. Because those are blindside angles, that's no fun. Although I'm game for anything, I don't care. Tell me the door, I'll hit it. One way or the other, I'll hit it. Well, it's just one of those days. <laughs> yes, another day in the glamorous world of over-the-road trucking. So that little uh, shipper that we went to in LaPorte, Indiana, oh my goodness, that was like being on another planet. Um, <laughs> oh God, almost four hours waiting for them to finish loading one trailer. Uh, and in the meantime, I had my entertainment just outside, listening to the guys in the warehouse screaming obscenities at the top of their lungs 
Uh, I have no idea aimed at who, whom, uh, whether it be the company or some co-workers not getting along, or I have no idea, but I heard non-stop F-bombs uh, at the top of their lungs and driving their forklifts like they want to kill them. Um, I was just sitting there like, oh my God, these guys, they're going to destroy this trailer. Um, which thankfully it, they didn't, uh, at least not according to what I can see. But holy cow. Um, yeah, so that was an experience. And now we're on our way to Eau Claire, and of course you got to come through the greater metro Chicago area, and it's uh, right around 4 in the afternoon, and I-294 heading up north, and as you can see coming down south is an absolute cluster you-know-what um, because of all the construction. Um, it is getting better. Slowly but surely there's more and more of it that isn't a construction disaster. Uh, but, you know, they're still working on it, and it's still lengthy delays. So this is one of those Mondays where, uh, yeah, not making any money today, that's for damn sure. Just covering a load, keeping the, keeping the doors open at the company, and uh, that's what we do as drivers. You know, some days we drivers can make some money. Other days it's just a matter of keeping the cogs and the wheels turning and uh, it's not really doing much for us as far as our wallet is concerned. But that's the uh, the pay by mile, uh, I don't know, I, I like to steal a term from Steely Dan and call it the royal scam uh, because that's exactly what it is. Um, it came from an age where uh, I think that the labor force at the time, way back when, didn't really have a very good understanding of math <laughs> and finances and anything financial. Uh, and it sounded like, ooh, big money, big money. Look at all these cents per mile. Um, yeah, and in the meantime, all the trucking companies laughed their way to the bank because uh, they were grossly underpaying drivers for decades uh, while raking in money. But hey, you know, that's another topic all on its own. So anyway, we are slogging our way through the construction fund, and uh, hopefully I'll even get to Eau Claire today. Um, I should. <laughs> Don't know if I'm going to get much farther than that, so just one of those days. The next... <laughs> the next morning... Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Tuesday, September 26th. And greetings from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, from the driveway entrance of the Quick Trip, <laughs> uh, where I snuck my little bobtail truck in last night late. Uh, found a spot here as I was driving in, and I figured, ah, what the hell, it looks as good as any. So uh, parked here, and the good thing is it's real close to the door, and it's freaking raining, and has been raining, and it hasn't stopped raining since I pulled in here so uh, being close to the door hey that's good um, anyway yesterday proved to be a day from hell <laughs> god oh my goodness yeah those are the days where you're wondering what the hell am I doing why do I drive a truck for a living it, 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 life should not be this difficult uh, but yeah we uh, we started the day yesterday with uh, with the very very first time since I've been uh, driving here at MNS1 Express over the last three plus months, uh, yesterday was the very first time that in the morning uh, they didn't have a load ready for me. So, of course, that's going to happen. It doesn't matter who the company is or where or how great the company is. At some point, that will happen. And uh, I'm actually rather shocked that it took over three months for it to happen. But uh, yesterday, it did. So uh, I usually, my Mondays are, are probably like a lot of other truck drivers' Mondays. Um, they are, they're kind of the most brutal day uh, that you have you know, when you return to the truck because I live over an hour away from the terminal. Uh, and of course, you want to start your day early uh, because the earlier you start, the earlier you can shut down and therefore there's more parking available. Uh, it just works better. So even though I'm a night owl, I force myself to be an early riser. 
uh, you know, when I'm in truck mode, right? So I woke up at what, four o'clock in the morning-ish, something like that, um, you know, to be able to do all the things I needed to do before I locked up the condo and headed uh, to the terminal. Uh, so, you know, left by 6 a.m., got there a little after seven, and no load. So the very uh, first load I got was about two hours and change later, a little after 9 a.m., uh, and that's when I got that broker load um, that picked up in LaPorte, Indiana. That place turned out to be just an absolute clusterfuck. Um, spent over three hours there, so, you know, if you're doing the math, um, you know, that's uh, over five hours of waiting time. Um, you know, that's... <laughs> Yeah, that, that's significant, right? So, mind you, I was awake at, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning. So, long story short, grab that load, drive up here to Eau Claire, and of course, you know, midway through the drive, since it's already raining and stormy, it's already dark. So, the last several hours of that drive coming up here, uh, it was in absolute darkness, um, coming up through northwest Wisconsin, which is absolute darkness um, and trees and, and all that good stuff you know it's it's country right and uh, driving rainstorm horrible visibility along with the rain there was like intense fog that we kept driving through every time you'd go down into a into a valley because it's quite hilly right so it's not you know super super steep hills but it's you know it's it's rolling landscape so every time you get down into towards the bottom you know you're you're all of a sudden not only in rain but also in fog so uh, and then gusty winds to go along with it it was just yeah it those are the types of drives where you know in a car it's stressful enough but in a truck boy it's like white knuckle because people drive like idiots um, and then you can't see and you know so it's slow going uh, there were at least a couple of people off in the ditch um, thankfully not trucks uh, just cars going too fast and sliding down into the ditch. Um, there was one wreck that I passed by, though, that was pretty frickin' brutal. <clears throat> and uh, it was an old Crown Victoria, you know, so an old kind of cop car looking thing. Um, and somehow, I, it wasn't evident in, in what I saw from, from the accident, but somehow or another, this Crown Victoria um, tangled with a flatbed truck and the flatbed truck was loaded with steel. So you can only imagine how that turned out. Um, this Crown Vic, the entire front three quarters of the car was smashed like a pancake. So I doubt very highly whoever was in that car made it out alive, unfortunately. And if they did, it's a miracle. Uh, it was freaking horrendous looking. Um, so that was very sobering to pass. Uh, but, you know, that's again another thing when you drive a truck, you're going to see it. You know, you're going to see road carnage and uh, it's never pleasant and it's always a shock and, you know, that kind of shit lingers with you for a while, you know. I mean, it's like, holy crap, you know, somebody's life probably just ended there. Um, so it's, uh, and then, you know, of course, the other part of that tragedy is seeing the, uh, the flatbed truck rather unscathed. Uh, over on the opposite shoulder parked and you know waiting to do whatever it is they had to do and that poor driver uh, standing there outside of his truck um, I, I can't even imagine what what was going through that guy's head um, you know it it's just that's the type of stuff where you just you know when you drive a truck you just you'd rather not even think about it because man, that's something he's going to have to live with for the rest of his life, even, you know, even though it may not have been anything to do with his fault, even remotely close to his fault, maybe that car just slid right into him and he had no control and couldn't do a thing to prevent it, um, it's still, you know, you're involved in it, you know, so it's, my, uh, my heart goes out to that driver, um, that, that's rough, so anyway, uh, not to get into a, a, a down mode, uh, you know, it's, you know, that's just part of the reality of, of, of the business and uh, the reality of life. So anyway, it is 
Shortly after 9 a.m., we're, we're just pre-tripped and uh, we're at this quick trip, which is right down the road from the Lowson Avenue lot for Menards in Eau Claire. And I have a loaded trailer to go grab and uh, we're gonna bring that one to Washington Courthouse, Ohio. So that's a 662 mile run, I believe. Uh, probably won't get there today, um, but we're gonna see how far we can get. So let's get rolling. 